Hello and welcome to another episode of the Startup Operator Roundup. I'm Roshan Karepa. And I'm Gunjan Saha. And together we bring you the biggest highlights from India's growing startup ecosystem. Now, last week was a great week, especially for ONDC, as we saw some key developments take place. PepsiCo joined the network to increase their customer discoverability. And along with them, Ola also announced plans to join the platform. Amazon, on the other side, are inking deals with the Indian Railways, with the Indian Post, to enable a $20 billion exports from India. Now, I think that's a huge, huge number. That's a huge number. We'll also talk about AIGR Foundation initiating a process to form its own gaming self-regulatory body, along with some other fundraisers from the week. So stay tuned as we discuss these topics in more detail. Roshan, uh, today morning, did you catch the launch of the Aditya L1 shuttle? No, no, uh, I couldn't catch that. But I mean, it's amazing. You know, one week we've uh, gone to the moon and the other, you know, we're <laughs> headed towards the sun. Well, the Aditya L1 satellite is not exactly going to the sun, uh, as is obvious. It's going to this uh, point called L1 or Lagrange 1 uh, point, where uh, which is about 15 lakh kilometers from the mm-hmm. Earth, uh, where the Earth and the sun's gravitational field kind of cancel out each other. Uh, and it's going to do some uh, interesting things. It's going to study um, solar winds, uh, solar flare, um, you know, what the sun's composition like, the photosphere, chromosphere, etc. Um, right. Uh, and uh, going to send back plenty of interesting data for us. Uh, so I love that, you know, ISRO is acting like a startup, right, with all mm-hmm. of these launches and so on. Uh, fantastic stuff. You know, India is uh, uh, becoming a space superpower in that sense. Yeah. No, it's interesting. I mean, um, just few months back, right, we were talking about, okay, ISRO is now opening up. Uh, to the private sector, to the startup ecosystem. And since then, all these missions, right, we have done firstly in itself is a major milestone. But I don't think this missions would have been possible if ISRO still remained, you know, like closed to, to the public. I think without the partnership we have with startups and with other, you know, uh, deep tech companies, these things would be possible. So ISRO has a pedigree of its own, right? I mean, it's been, you know, invested in core R&D for decades now. Uh, right Uh, since the late 60s perhaps and uh, what the privatization of space has uh, enabled is that that a larger base of innovation is happening as in i mean you know there are uh, startups that are working with this row there are private companies uh, large companies like perhaps matma india and so on that are working with this row and so on right so uh, this privatization of space is uh, very important you know i mean we've noticed what nasa has done with the likes of you know spacex uh, and taking a cue from them uh, because it can certainly speed on up innovation. So while ISRO has a pedigree, the talent, uh, the capability, capacity and all of those things, uh, I think, you know, the startups and, you know, the, the privatization has added that little bit of thadka, uh, right? It's acted as a catalyst to sort of speed things up uh, and more good things are uh, in the in the roadmap, I think. Yeah, for sure. We're talking about good things. It was a really good week for ONDC. Mm-hmm. Some re- uh, big brands announced their part- their joining of the network. Um, PepsiCo becomes the latest retailer to join. Uh, we already have likes of Warm Momo, Red Bull, ITC, Rebel Foods. ONDC, from 500 restaurants in February 2023, they have scaled to 50,000 restaurant partners on the wow. platform. So I think um, if I was working in Swiggy or Zomato, it would be... I mean, there will be some conversations going on around this for sure. For sure. I mean, uh, see, the last mile delivery is something that's yet to be sorted, uh, right? Who owns the uh, customer and that a whole experience, right? Because it might seem that it's very disjoint, right? Uh, uh, the delivery partner is someone else, the, you know, the merchant is someone else. And, and you know, we've noticed that uh, whether it's on Zomato or Swiggy or, you know, even Uber, Ola, etc., the fact that the platform is tightly controlled by one entity offers the advantage of quality control, right? But what is going to happen in this case um, is yet to be understood fully, but it's a very positive development because ONDC is the first of its kind in the world, um, right? And uh, if we make this successful, it will be a template for, you know, what, uh, uh, what others could follow as well. Uh, right. So, you know, it's it's a very big deal that PepsiCo has been convinced to uh, come on ONDC, right? I mean, one of the larger FMCG brands. Uh, and I hope the others will follow suit as well, right? I mean, uh, um, the HULs and the ITCs of the world, um, because it's a large enough network, right? And it's, a, uh, it's in the nascent stage, but it's worth a try, I think, at this point of time. So, a lot will depend on how these newer brands and partners treat their customers. And I hope that, you know, people are mindful of that customer experience because this is what will make or break ONDC. 
along with PepsiCo, even Amazon managed to capture a lot of headlines last week, especially since they announced that by 2025 they want to achieve 20 billion dollars in exports. Wow! And uh, to facilitate this, they signed an MOU with uh, the Indian Railways and the Indian Post to mm. expedite shipping across the country. They've also launched uh, multi-channel fulfillments for D2C companies and other small businesses to use the Amazon infrastructure to run their operations. And hopefully with this, the SMEs will be able to reach even more clients. This whole concept of a dedicated freight corridor to uh, facilitate exports really reminded me of the ODOP scheme in UP. Now, ODOP stands for one district, one product. So they identified what is that one product across every district um, that is unique to each district in Uttar Pradesh. And the government tried to encourage the uh, production and the promotion of the product on a global stage. And it was highly successful. According to the state data, um, the total value of exports of ODOP products increased from 58,000 crores in 2017-18, uh, which was when the um, initiative was introduced, to 96,000 crores in 21-22. So that's an increase of around 38,000 crores in just four years. Um, so yeah, I think it's really good to see that, you know, large enterprise names are coming together to facilitate this entire um, exports and how they want to take advantage of the infrastructure we have built in the country. Yeah, uh, see, the Indian Post obviously serves the most number of pin codes in India, uh, right? And we also have a massive railway network. Now, these are large infrastructure um, uh, that can be that can be leveraged, right? Obviously, so Amazon is very smart in tying up with these uh, entities, uh, really. And and what Amazon can do for let's say the railways, which has very shit uh, <laughs> technology, right? At, at its back end, I mean, uh, Amazon can provide that uh, amazing uh, technology infrastructure that uh, they are known for. So I feel like it's a win-win, uh, right? From a logistics and a technology perspective. And the more important point is the, uh, you know, is the exposure that some of these smaller businesses will get. So you mentioned the state of Uttar Pradesh, uh, right? Which has done phenomenally well on the industry uh, front, right? They've managed to attract some large uh, multinationals as well. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, setting up plants and whatnot, right? Uh, and has improved uh, in infrastructure massively. Right. Um, what this does is basically give that leverage to these smaller businesses to sell their wares uh, to a larger demographic of people, uh, right? So I think it's a fabulous idea. Okay, uh, let's talk a bit about the gaming industry. The All India Gaming Regulator Foundation is applying for self-regulatory organization status. And this is the fourth organization to file such an application. The Indian government's online gaming rules largely defer regulating the online skill-based gaming sector to private self-regulatory organizations. But um, the ministry has been sitting, has been taking its time in approving these um, applications. Now, with these delays complicate the interests of companies. And it's also, you know, we have heard states like um, Tamil Nadu that have claimed that, you know, the rules encroach on their exclusive jurisdiction to regulate gambling in India. And gambling includes the likes of skill gaming. Mm. So while the rules attempt to legitimize the skill gaming industry, its future in India necessarily isn't too great because we have seen the GST council's decision to tax um, the prize money at 28% has really caused, really led to some of the companies axing its workforce. And we're just seeing the start of that. Yeah, it's a very nebulous time to be in gaming in India, right? I mean, there, there's so much flux on the regulatory uh, front. Uh, there's there's so much of ambiguity on this whole game of skill versus game of chance itself. You see multiple court cases uh, being filed in various states. Uh, add to that the fact that, you know, we have a federal structure and uh, the state deems, you know, this as a key source of revenue as well. Right. Uh, it can go either ways, right? I mean, depending on where you operate and what you do. Uh, so it's it's a, it's a tough time for sure. Now the self-governing uh, regulation is is something that we had mooted earlier, right? I mean, mm -hmm. some of these uh, industries, you know, people have to come forward and form these bodies themselves and be proactive about regulation, work with the government, uh, right? Sort of lobby for the right laws and whatnot, uh, because that is the only way that you know they will get more favorable policies. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you know, some babu sitting somewhere will pass a kind of regulation that may not be suitable for them. I mean, the gaming, I mean, it's a positive step, uh, definitely, you know, uh, for these folks to come together and be a little more proactive on that front. Right. Yeah. You know, this also reminds me uh, something that Arjun spoke about in the latest po podcast. Um, he says that if there's enough innovation happening in the ecosystem, the government is bound and should take notice of it 
and draft policies that is favorable to to boost that ecosystem yeah so uh, yeah i think um, we'll soon see some developments in this area yeah see innovation always precedes regulation like you rightly said uh, right so which means that you know rather than uh, the government wake up one fine day and you know think see that things have changed uh, and act hastily to uh, sort of you know you know prevent misuse or curtail the consequences so the industry should take the onus on itself to keep the government in the loop uh and provide that necessary know how and bridge the gap so the government may come up and draft more you know favorable policy okay let's move on to some um, fundraises from last week well there were not many mm-hmm. still um yet to see that uptick in the curve uh but grad capital which is a vc firm that invests especially spe- in student startups across india has launched its second fund with a size of 6 million dollars Uh, and they plan to back 20 startups per year there's also a grant program called atomic fellowship that gives 5000 dollars to students with technical projects space tech startup satsure raised 15 million dollars from bearing private equity and others medibuddy which is a digital healthcare platform has raised an additional 18 million dollars in funding from its existing investors that include quadria capital lightrock and team fund then credrite which is another fintech startup they raised 78 crores or 9.7 million dollars in equity and debt from uh, michael and susan dell foundation yonest and others good to see that hey not only is there space developments going on yeah in the industry but hey there are space tech startups raising funds as well and in case you guys haven't caught the fantastic episode with arjun rao of special ventures uh, that we put out last week do check it out he talks a lot about these uh, innovations and you know what are the major narratives uh, how these companies are getting built Uh, I think it's fantastic. So do definitely check that out. Uh, for the talk of the town section, very interesting tweet by Avinash Bhatnagar. He writes, "Quote unquote, Indian startups are just copies." And then he lists Ather, Yulu, Pixel, Postman, PhonePay. As the Indian market deepens with talent and size, more will come. Incredible to see entrepreneurs continuing to innovate and build on shoulders of giants. Can you break this tweet down for us? Yeah, uh, see, I think this is something that is a regular trope, right? Which uh, I I keep uh, saying as well that Flipkart is not India's Amazon, uh, right? And uh, Ola is not India's Uber. And similarly, any of these companies that are so-called copycats are not, right? Because Indian context is different, Indian consumer is different, and the constraints here are way different, right? Uh, right? so definitely not just the constraints i mean even the advantages like think of the you know digital public infrastructure that we have you know through aadhar upi etc uh, i'm not sure you know if uh, <laughs> this kind of kyc is possible in the us right i mean so famously when this whole silicon valley ba- bank uh, situation was happening in the us startups here found out how difficult it is to set up a new account uh, there right uh, <laughs> very different from uh, what it's like here aviral has talked about the companies that are solving acutely indian problems whether it's ather or yulu and so on but uh, even the ones that you consider so called copycats are not copycats actually because it isn't as easy as just call you know copying a business because the situation is entirely different um and this is how it sort of goes right i mean this is how the innovation curve is any in any case right i mean first you sort of trade uh, right you make use of the arbitrage then you develop ideas that have worked elsewhere for your context and then you come up with original ideas i mean that's just the innovation curve for you right um people often mistakenly ask you know where is india's microsoft or india's google as if you know you can even compare a country of about 2500000 per capita uh, dollars uh to a country mm-hmm. with about 50000 plus uh, per capita dollars right i mean it's just not even in the same uh stratosphere you know so uh it's a curve and we're getting there and these often take an inflection point uh and that inflection point could be maybe the success of a flipkart right maybe the success of an ather uh which is which is fantastic right i mean some of these ev startups uh, whether it's ather or um ultraviolet have been operating for almost 10 years now right but the moment has come now you know and uh, you can say you know all of the f- policy tailwinds and so on and so forth but it's going to take time and it's going to happen uh, right so yeah very positive and optimistic about uh, india tech innovation and startups i think you know uh, we're going to see plenty of action uh, in the decade uh, following right and if you want to know more about what's happening in the indian startup ecosystem and how we are progressing make sure to who do we follow <laughs> if you're not already following yeah the startup operator <laughs> so yeah if you want uh, if you want to learn more about what are the various developments happening in the indian startup ecosystem make sure you subscribe to our channel and also like this video 
so that the algorithm will start referring more such content to you. And if you want updates from startup operator to be delivered straight into your WhatsApp inbox, please uh, click on the WhatsApp link which you'll find in the description below. Well, that's it for this week. Roshan and I will be back again next week with more amazing news to share with you. So take care. We'll see you again. Bye bye. See you guys. Cheers.